Hello, welcome to this tutorial demonstrating GLEMI, the Global Livestock Environmental Assessment Model Interactive. My name is Sheda Özkan, and in this tutorial, I will walk you through the steps the users need to take to use the model from scratch. I will show you how to enter or modify data, the main features of the three main modules in the tool and how to operate them. And finally, I will explain how the results can be viewed and saved for future use or analysis. At the end of this video, you will have become more familiar with the main features of the tool GLEMI and how to use it. Let's get started. GLEMI can be found at glemi.eps.fao.org. To get started, we first need to select from the drop down menu the region and then the country we would like to conduct the assessment for. Today, I'm selecting Sub-Saharan Africa and Uganda. Then I hit the Start Simulation button. Next step is to select the animal species, the production systems, and the orientations the user wants to work with. The six icons here, from left to right, represent the animal species cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, chicken, and pig. For each species, the model allows the user to choose the production system, which can be grassland or mixed, for ruminants, backyard, broiler, and layers for chicken, and finally, backyard, intermediate, and industrial for pigs. For the definition of production systems, please consult the manual. The orientation refers to the product output of production system. Orientation options are meat or dairy for ruminants, eggs or meat for chicken, and finally, meat for pigs. It's important to note here that dairy also applies to multipurpose cattle which means that the production system, even in the case of data orientation, produces a certain amount of meat as a co-product. This happens, for example, when the farmer sells male calves. Today, I will choose cattle species, mixed production systems, with a data orientation. Please be informed that two subsequent videos cover practice exercises both for cattle and pig production systems with different orientations in different geographical regions. Then I click Next. Here, before we move a step forward, I would like to explain what different icons mean. Now the users can notice on the left upper corner here the animal icon that represents the animal species they are working with. Had we selected several animal species, their respective icons would have also appeared here. If the user moves the cursor close to the animal icon, then they would also be able to recognize which production system and the orientation they have earlier chosen. Clicking on the animal icon takes the user back to the selection of species, where they can alter either the selected production system and the orientation, or add new species, production systems, and orientations. On the right upper corner here, the region and the country selection are displayed. When opening the URL, if pre previous work was done on the same computer and browser, it's automatically loaded. Clicking on the trash bin icon raises the work done and takes the user back to the very start page for a new simulation. Let's continue with the selection of modules. There are three main modules in the tool, herd, feed, and manure. They correspond to the technical entry points for improving the carbon footprint of livestock systems. At this point, before hitting the next button, the user should select the parameter categories for each module, for which in the next step, they plan to enter or modify data. Clicking on each module, the parameter categories are displayed. For herd, we choose all parameter categories except for feedlot. For feed, the user should select the animal cohorts they have available feed data for. Today I'm selecting adult females only. For manure, 
which is the only parameter category available, and then hit next. Now four new icons have appeared. In the upper part, the three icons represent the three main modules. And if the user moves the cursor closer to these icons, they will also be informed of the parameter categories chosen in the step before. And clicking on these icons will take the user back to the page where three main modules are displayed. And there the user is able to modify any of the parameter categories. This icon here enables the user to modify the baseline selection. Let's have a closer look on how the user can select an existing or create a new baseline. Baseline represents initial system state to which the scenarios are compared. Here the user is given two options. First, if the user is familiar with one of the existing baselines, they can find and select it from the drop-down menu. Second option is to create a new baseline. Creating a baseline only takes typing it here in this box in one word, avoiding special characters. I will create a new baseline called with vaccine. If the user skips this without selecting an existing or creating a new baseline, then only default parameters will display. For any of the default parameters, please consult the Gleam manual. Clicking next takes us to the scenarios. Scenarios are the specific cases the user wants to compare to the baseline. A scenario can reflect changes in one or multiple modules. It can be an intervention. It can represent different activities of a project, different herds or farms, different seasons for the same herd and so on. It would be helpful if the user defines clearly what changes from a scenario to another scenario. I would like to look at the impact of a vaccination program today and compare it with the baseline I just created in the previous step. Again, the format of typing here is one word, so I will write with vaccine. And I will only have one scenario now, but the users can have as many as it suits them. Next step is to enter new data or review the existing ones. Now new icons have appeared. The first one in the upper part of the screen represents input data and once clicked would replace all the data in the baseline and the scenario with the default values. There are two backward play icons. First one represents previous species and the second one represents previous module. Similarly, there are two forward play icons. The first one takes the user to the next species and the second one to the next module. We have two more new icons. The eraser icon sets all the values to zero and the icon next to it copies from the previous column. Finally, there are three boxes. These boxes have a drop-down menu and are useful in case of the selection of more than one production system, orientation, or animal cohort for feed. Once clicked, the parameters below are only displayed for the selected production system, orientation, and the animal cohort. Data entry can be done by clicking on the icons representing the modules on herd, feed, and manure. By default, the data entry starts with the herd module. The number of variables in each module differs based on the animal species production system or orientation. The way the herd data is organized on this page is that it shows in the first two columns the production system and the orientation. The next two columns refer to parameters and their respective units. By clicking on the parameter, the user can alphabetically order the variables. The last three columns are the numerical figures, where the very first one, distinct the default, 
the one in the middle in green text with the new baseline created. And finally, the last one with the data representing the scenario. The data entered at this step is crucial as the intermediate calculations that produce a Hertz structure are based on the data inputted here. The users are advised to review and revise the default data. For the vaccination scenario I just created, I implicitly assume that the animals vaccinated become healthier, therefore the mortality rates in the herd would reduce. To reflect this, I would need to modify the death rates. I will modify the default to reflect the death rate of 15% for adult and 10% for young animals. And in the scenario, I expect the death rates to reduce to 10% and 5% for the adult and young animals, respectively. I would also like these data to represent the farm with 100 adult females and 20 adult males. And for that, I go down to the number of animals and adjust it to 100 for the adult females and 20 for the adult males. Then we follow the same procedure for data entry in the feed and manure modules by clicking on their respective icons. In the feed module, the user enters the feed data in their percentage share. Here I'm going to change a couple of feed items only in the scenario. For example, I will take out 5% from crop residues from rice and move it to grains. Another 10% I would like to move from hay or silage from alfalfa and add it to maize. This can be done for as many feed ingredients as it is applicable for the user. The only heads up here is to make sure that the total adds up to 100%. If it doesn't, the system will give a warning and it will not allow the user to proceed. Finally, let's move on to the manure module. The data entry for the manure module follows a similar structure as feed. Following the IPCC guidelines, the user is provided with the option to enter data for different manure management systems as in their percentage share. First, I would like to set all values to zero. And for this exercise, I would like to make the liquid slurry system 100% in the baseline and move it all to anaerobic digester in the scenario. Now we have completed the data entry and can generate results by clicking next. The results are displayed in three main sections. The first section shows the totals, absolute emissions in kilogram carbon dioxide equivalents, protein production in kilogram, and feed intake in kilogram dry matter. As you can see, the modifications we made in the scenario reduced the greenhouse gas emissions by about 41%, increased the protein production by 13%, and reduced the feed intake by about 2%. The second section contains the graphical results. The bar charts here show emission intensities protein production and total emissions. Clicking on default removes the default and displays the results only for baseline and scenario. A breakdown of emissions into methane, nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide is provided in these pie charts. Additional bar charts illustrate the breakdown of emissions by source. And finally, the composition of feed. The third and the final results section displays the raw results. 
which can be used for additional or further analysis. Raw results show the changes from the baseline, orange meaning an increase, and blue color meaning a reduction in the scenario compared to the baseline. Finally, the results can be copied or saved. With this, we have come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful and see it as a source to consult when you start using Gleemai. If you're interested to get some hands-on experience with Gleemai, I invite you to watch the two subsequent videos delving more deeply into how to use the tool with two practice exercises, one on Kettle and another one on quick production systems. Thank you for watching.